Thanks for staying with us. Uh, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa and uh, it's time to go to the papers to see what the headlines are this morning. Joining us to discuss the headlines is Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner and a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. Mm. Hope we have a breakfast night. Uh, well, I slept, I woke up, I am facing Nigeria again. <laughs> okay. yes, That's how it is. We thank God for that. We hope that you had a wonderful night as well. I did, I did. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Let's begin today uh, going to the papers. We'll start with the Business NG. And uh, the Business NG leads with banks' tech upgrade to cause more service disruptions nationwide. As if it's not enough what we've been facing in the past one week uh, or a little bit above one week. Uh, now we have this headline saying banks tech upgrade to cause more service disruptions nationwide. What do you think? Well, uh, there's no doubt about it that the technology, not just in the banking sector, but in all areas of our lives, is developing in a very, very good manner. Such that uh, you need to be on top of your game to catch up with it. And if the banks in Nigeria are not to be left behind compared to their counterparts in the other parts of the world, then they must maintain continuity of technology. I recollect that about uh, one and a half weeks ago, there about, I went to my bank and was going to do transactions, but I could not do it because they said there were issues um, with the internet and some of these other services. I mean, some of these other technologies that with my banking transaction. Not until yesterday or there about that I was able to, to do it. So my only concern is that uh, is there no way we can find a way to upgrade these technologies uh, during the weekend, like Saturday and Sunday, when uh, bank customers uh, don't uh, use the bank as much as they do during the working days. Because the pain, some of these disruptions cause can sometimes be far reaching and uh, very difficult to really uh, 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 reverse. Imagine if a man were to be carrying a pregnant wife to the hospital and they have to make payment and they went there with their ATM card and what are you? And then the ATM doesn't work. When the hospital is not likely to attend to such persons, that could result into fatality, such as we've seen during the currency, during the currency changes, and when the mental level was dropped last and So the bank should find a way to do this without inflicting too much pain on, on their customers. Why all of them had to do it at the same time? Because uh, we're finding these disruptions, especially in the mainstream banks and not online exactly. banks like we are, we are seeing. So why are they finding it so difficult in the regular banks and not on the other uh, microfinance banks that are online, more or less? I, I just wonder. But, um, and, you know, the kind of weight that the big banks carry, the commercial, I mean, the, yes. the small, small banks that don't uh, carry such a uh, weight, such as the customer base and what have you, are most times so, the people, the, the small, small banks that deal with uh, petty traders, most of their transactions are hardly even done. They're using continuous technology such as the big commercial banks uh, they will do. But with that as with me, we should uh, still continue to admonish the bank that uh, the kind of upgrade that they are doing also takes place in, in some other parts of the world, in most other parts of the world. And the kind of discussion that we see in Nigeria hardly takes place in those places. Imagine if the bank were to be shut down for one and a half a week in a place like the U.S., a place like a Britain, in a place like um, a China, you can imagine the reputational damage uh, that kind of a thing would have done to such a bank in places. It could lead to massive, massive customer flights from the bank. So they should be able to balance this thing. Yes, upgrade your technology, but do it uh, uh, prudent, such that uh, the things that are intended on people 
TV minimize. Okay. Uh, there's this uh, headline, that uh, small headline down left corner, Lagos Calabar Highway to be ready by May 2025. That's according to the federal government. Well, that would be a wonderful thing. It would be a beautiful thing if we're able to get it ready uh, by 2025. Uh, but we must remember that uh, a lot of variables will uh, affect the compression of that um, uh, route. One is availability of money uh, to complete it. The other one is even environmental. It is a coastal road. If there is flooding, if there is a typhoon, if there are social surges and murder, it could affect uh, the compression of the route. But I think the federal government is desirous of completing it. That must be the reason why they broke it into a uh, different parts and I wanted to cut out for the construction of the different sections to different contractors to ensure that um, the road is fully completed. But in our history of uh, project implementation and execution, is anything good to go by? The federal government will require to have a magic wand and be able to do a miracle to be able to complete that road by 2025. So let us be hopeful. Well, uh, you said let us be hopeful. After all, this uh, administration is all about hope. Hope from hope to, re <laughs> to renew hope and everything. Uh, for the seventh time, or almost the eighth time, we've been promised that NNPC will work. And the NNPC is not a new uh, establishment. It's not a new company. It's something that just needs some refurbi uh, refurbishing and uh, some maintenance that they have been doing over the years without us seeing any any results. NNPC exactly. still hasn't, hasn't worked after mm. seven promises. NNPC, NNPC is almost as old as Nigeria. Most still behave like uh, Papa Chai. I think the problem with the NNPC is a uh, political. The political way to really make the NNPC work uh, appears to me not to be there. It is a cash cow for the government Certainly the federal government. And uh, each time a new administration comes in there, they actually want to do the needful to be able to make that organization work. Because all of them know that it will depend on the NNPC as a cash cow to do whatever they want to do. So, except to have uh, the vision and then the political way, the NNPC may not work for a long, long time to come. So how, how is it a, a cash cow for, for the government? Because if it's a cash cow for the government, we will see where the money is coming, when the money is coming and where it is going and all that. We don't seem to see whatever is happening. For instance, there's a group that was just uh, protesting, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday, and saying that uh, the NNPC is as if they're going to, they want to be using it for some other kinds of operation. And it is disappointing that two billion dollars had been put into an npc and we're not seeing the results and if that is the case and that kind of money has been put into an npc then where has it gone to so if it's a cash cow don't you think it's a cash cow for individuals rather than the government because we should have been seeing this this money working well, for us it is the ordinary nigeria that are not seeing where the cash cow i mean where the money is going the people in authority uh, do see the money and they know where they are putting it. And uh, there's hardly any doubt about that. You yeah, and I would know and then also remember and what the Nigerian people have been crying about all over the issues and all that is that there is opaqueness, there isn't transparency in the management of the affairs of, um, of the NNPC. If the parents transparency were to be there, if the opaqueness uh, were to be removed and all that, then some of the things that they use this money to do, which may not be legal, which may not be lawful, which may not be allowed by law, they will find it difficult to be able to use the money to do such. That might be the reason why there is a fakeness, why there is a lack of transparency, and that is why most times uh, the money is uh, not allowed to go where it ordinarily should, uh, uh, should go. And uh, it's affecting the health of the nation. For example, a country like Saudi Arabia, from the from the reach where the oil is uh, being pumped out 
to the last destination where it is sold and all that. Everything is computerized. And people can sit in the comfort of their home, in the comfort of their offices and all that, and monitor the transparency, the way and where these things are being done. Until they are in the final sold to some, to some consumers or customers uh, somewhere else. But well, here in Nigeria, that is not the issue. Here yeah, and I know the battle with those who are doing uh, company with uh, the pipeline. Here yeah, and I know the battle that the government has to wait or the war the government has to wait against those who vandalize uh, or who are doing bunkers. Here yeah, and I will know the kind of uh, war that the government has to wait against bandits uh, and all manners of people who use the oil money, who use the, the petroleum resources of the country, or who have turned the petroleum resources of the country to their personal issues, of course, also recollect the so-called uh, subsidies that the country has been paying over the region are also issues. So like I said, they are a political, if there is a political way, these are issues that should not be beyond any government uh, uh, that has uh, ruled this country as independent. Okay. Um, Supreme Court to hear 16 states suit against EFCC on October 22. Uh, 16 states uh, governments have gone to court uh, to say that EFCC is illegal and uh, it was not established uh, with the correct law or something. And they were quoting the sections of the Constitution against e EFCC. And this, this case was brought curiously uh, before the court by the Kogi state government. They were the first ones to do that. And other states joined and said that uh, EFCC is an illegal entity. Uh, uh, your comments, please. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, just a minor uh, correction. I think it was the legal state government that forced it to... Uh, the EFCC, though not at the Supreme Court, uh, and at the Supreme Court, as regards the activities of that uh, organization, their take is that uh, the EFCC should only monitor, regulate, and enforce fiscal discipline as regards the funding, all the, the, the resources, all the money that goes to the federal government, which is about 50 cents of the revenue of the federation and not what goes to the state. The argument behind this is that the Nigeria is a federation uh, and that uh, the local government, the state government, are independent of the federal government. And the federal government should not see and begin to dictate what the state should do with their money. And then on the part of the federal government, they would argue that um, there are certain money that they make available to the state and know that for which they would um, desire accountability. And that even when monies are passed to the state government and the local government and other, they still coming from the nation's resources, from the revenue that are put to the federation. And the government being the overall governance in this country should be able to insist on fiscal discipline and ensure that the resources of the government uh, are presently managed. And when you look at the constitution and all that, it speaks volumes. On the part of the federal government to really ensure that there is fiscal discipline, there is transparency, and that the corruption is not the hallmark of state and, uh, and what have you. And even the state government, the local government, are enjoyed by the constitution to team up with the federal government in ensuring prudence and capability, and then ensuring that the nature resources is utilized solely or whatever it is meant to be utilized uh, for. So let us see what to do to the, what the ruling will be from the Supreme Court. It is difficult to predict the Supreme Court in the sense that uh, the philosopher has said that um, law is a prophecy of what the court will say. But if the rulings of the Supreme Court in the past is anything to go by, I am not too sure that the Supreme Court will agree with the state government's argument as regards. Uh, uh, the activities of the EFCC. Uh, okay. So that story, anyway, was on Daily Trust. Um, uh, yeah. There was odd, another story, um, not here now, but uh, there was another story that Lagos State said that VIO uh, 
can operate anyhow they were operating before now, before the, uh, the judgment that was given in Abuja that Lagos is different. They have the laws that covered VIO operating the way they should operate. So I, I don't know, maybe we just digress a little bit and talk about that. VIO has been banned from doing so many things that they do on the roads, but Lagos State say they can continue because they have the laws uh, that empower VIO to do that. Yeah, if my memory serves me right, I think it was a lawyer in the southeast that took the VIO to court as regards the activities on the road and won that uh, case. And I think there was an appeal to um, to the court of appeal. But here in Lagos too, there are the instances in which people have taken the VIO to court and they have won the they are, they have won the cases. And the court have ruled against the VIO. There is no doubt that uh, most of the states of the federation have their separate laws as regards their activities and then um, what the VIO are expected to do on the road. Most times what people complain about with regard to the VIO is uh, the time they wait and also some of the papers that they begin to ask for. They have some other channels to which they could have some of these uh, papers. For example, on a yearly basis, you are expected to renew your pay, pay coup particular. Also, to the state and then the federal government have a database as regards uh, what vehicles are in Nigeria, which one has paid or renew their particular or not renew their particular. So, if you have such a database, it is totally unnecessary for you to go and be main ambush for drivers or vehicle owners when they are committing on the road, to, flag, to begin to flag them down and begin to ask them to produce their particulars and what have you. There should be a better and more tidy way of doing this kind of a thing. Like I said, your data plan should be the first point of call and not the road. And then not driving uh, like a bandwidth that is a lane ambush for people on the highway. So, uh, I agree. The Lagos State Government has their law, that the activity of their VIO, but I also agree that uh, they have been ruling against the VIO, even in uh, Lagos, uh, even in Lagos State. When we continue to test the law, uh, when people feel aggrieved about certain activities, or actions taken by the VIO, they should feel free to approach the court uh, to seek a redress. That is the way we can expand the fundamental human rights of citizens and also expand our jurisprudence and throw light on some of these opaque areas um, that are not too clear to the people. Look at the British people. They've been using their common law for more than 1,000 years. And they are still expanding their jurisprudence up to today. There's never going to be an end to the kind of uh, tip for task, the kind of uh, changes that we begin to see between their co-owners and then the, the police, the, the last man, and also the Federal Road Safety Corps. Let's just continue to test the law as issues arise. Well, I don't know why it has to always be like that. And we don't know why this is always happening in Lagos State. But um, that's matter for another day. Um, I would like to stay on Daily Trust, even though the story about VIO was on uh, the Guardian newspaper. But let me stay on Daily Trust now. Cholera-related deaths rise as Lagos, Jigawa, Kanu lead in casualties. And then uh, the writers are saying 10,837 suspected cases recorded nationwide in nine months, 359 die in 21 states, NCDC blames rainfall, open defecation, and experts uh, profile solutions. My concern is not directly what this, uh, um, this headline is saying. My concern is that Lagos State has promised that in 2025, there will be no longer uh, sachet water. There will be no pet bottles of water. And I don't know where that will lead us, especially now that we're talking about cholera-related deaths rising in the same Lagos that we are trying to... Uh, make beautiful uh, as it is. I don't know why this policy will come up, why there's even a mention 
because they are saying that the, the bottles or the, the, the sachets are littering Lagos and making Lagos to look uh, nasty and all that. So let's talk about this coming policy, this impending policy in 2025, where pet bottles and sachet water will be banned, just like uh, Okada yeah. was banned, Keke was banned yeah. in some places and all that. So to speak to it. Well, uh, there is no doubt that those uh, uh, sachets water and the plastic bottles are considering a menace, a nonsense, not just in legal state, but all over the Federation, all over the country. It is sad that we in this part of the world have not uh, developed the mechanism by which we can um, um, get reasons back after the content uh, has been... Uh, have been disposed. In some other countries of the world, most times when you see with this, they will have uh, one for, for for plastics, another related material, they have another one for paper, and then they will have some other ones for metal objects. So that when you have those things to throw away, you throw in the right container that has been your market for it. But again, too, those containers are in homes, they are on the streets, and what are they? And people have attained a high level of education, not to begin to throw things to the gutter or to throw things onto the road when they are driving a um, uh, path. So they are able to maintain um, hygiene, a high level of hygiene in their own community. But that has not been our case here. We dump things uh, on the on the drainages when the the rain is falling, believing that the rain will sweep them away. Whereas we don't know that sooner than later. Those things will get stopped somewhere else. Uh, they hardly travel uh, uh, very far. We also have not um, compelled those who produce those uh, materials, those things, to find a way to get to collect them back after the content has been used. In some other parts of the world, they do uh, uh, recycling and recollection. Once the content of those things are used, the people who use those things are not that. Or those containers to find a way to get them back and even recycle them. Because it's a huge waste of material when those things are um, uh, recycled. Uh, furthermore, I'm not too sure. Just banning those things uh, will be the only reason why we have colonists um, in liquor state and some other parts of, uh, of the country. You and I will remember. That pipe on water is now a rarity uh, all over the country. When we were growing up, especially in Lagos and Ibatong, most homes have a pipe on water supply so that we don't even have to depend on all this surface water, on plastic uh, bottled water and water. And with that, we maintain a high level of uh, hygiene. Furthermore, open, de open defecation. That is a uh, to put it in a layman's way, to put it under the bridges, uh, in the median, yes. and the gutters and water. And in local places, we're not as rampant as they are now in Lagos and some other parts of the country. So if you are to sort of tolerance, we must also be able to provide five bottles for our people. We must also be able to have we must also be able to stop uh, open education. And of course, we must be able to tax those who produce all these uh, sachet water, uh, plastic bottles, water, and all that, to find a way to take those things back before they become non-sacred on our streets. From literature that I have read has indicated that it takes about a hundred years for those plastic materials to bow the grade for them to be able to decompose. So if you take a hundred years to be able to decompose, they will just find a way to get these things back and recycle them. I say this time without number, that the difference between animals and human beings is ability to manage waste, ability of human beings to manage their waste. Any society, any group of people, any humanity that is unable to manage its waste is operating at the level of animals. In fact, they are not different from animals. So we should find a way to really manage our waste and then be able to take a corner 
another waterborne diseases out of our life. Yeah, well, I, I think it's, uh, uh, and, and I think a lot of people also say this, that is lazy thinking. When you just face a hurdle, you ban. Uh, you think that uh, there's, uh, uh, there's uh, um, what we call Okada on the streets and you think it's causing a nuisance, you ban. Uh, you think that, uh, and in, in fact, I, I was talking with the Commissioner for Information when this ban on uh, motorcycles on our roads uh, came into force. And I asked him, what are the alternatives? What do you ex expect the people to do at this time? And he said, let them trek. Let them trek it because it's, it was healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, he drove his car to the studio and told me that everybody else should trek. To trek to where? So these are, these are things that happen. You make policies and you don't consider the conditions of other people. So let's say, for instance, okay, now we're talking about cholera because there is no good water. And you say some people now, when they go to their offices because of the transportation cost, uh, they stay over till they, they finish the work for the week and go for weekends. They stay over at the office. So let's say you're working on the island and island water is not consumable. It's bad water on the island except you have a treatment plant or something. So when you're coming from your house, you begin to carry 25 liters of water to the office. And that's what we are going to be doing. Uh, you get stuck on the uh, highway inside traffic. You wait till you get home or you're carrying your pot of water that we used to have in those days and you'll be traveling with it. I, I don't know how this is going to happen. Even if you have a bottle or a flask that you can take water in, what is the assurance that every household has good water that they can take? They have pipe bond water. They, are, they have a borehole that they can take water from. So many houses don't have. The ones that have, they take water from the well. And that well should not be a source of drinking water. Is it not going to cause more health hazard? Because the government is not ready to put anything, anything in place to make sure that people can get good water to drink. Mm. Well, it's, uh, you have raised a very, very valid uh, uh, problem. I mean, a very valid uh, question or issue. And uh, most times when a government is enunciating or trying to implement a policy or a program and what have you, they put the cart before the horse and not the horse after the cart. Uh, simply because um, they hardly know where the shoe is pinching the ordinary people uh, in the country. If they go to what we go to and what have you, some of these decisions, some of these policies are not, uh, they will be uh, reluctant. To begin to enforce them as um, as they do, but uh, we also must look at the other side of uh, of uh, the, the, the story. Uh, people carry food items to their respective offices, and then they eat them there, and then uh, put them in some containers, and when they are going back, on some flask, and then they take those things uh, back home. We can begin to encourage our people to also carry whatever waters and what are they, they want to turn while they are committing from one place to the other. Mr. You know, Kola uh, you're, you're being nice. You're just being, you're just being nice, to, Mr. Kola Wole. Just imagine you entering a restaurant and then after eating, you're served water in a cup. Just imagine <laughs> that. In, just, just imagine yeah. that scenario in your, in your brain. Yeah. It's a very complex issue and a very, very complex issue. But I think uh, we should uh, support the government with regard to the ban on, uh, on uh, the container for packet water and the plastic bottle. It is creating more challenges than a solution. Is, uh, so what are the alternatives? Because people must drink water. What are the alternatives? What are the alternatives? And then such as the material. And then with the Okada, I would want to say that uh, if you look around Lagos today, where Okada is not uh, being uh, used or is not allowed to apply the road, you will find that, that noise pollution has drastically uh, dropped around those places. You will also know that uh, accidents which lead to breakages of legs and limbs and what have has drastically reduced with the ban on Okada. Even though it has also increased the unemployment 
in some of these uh, places. Oh, all right, Mr. Well, Kalawale. These are some very difficult decisions yeah. that the government has to make. But any action of government where it has more merit than uh, deficit, I think we should have. Okay, well, uh, as, at, as at this moment, I am against that, that law uh, until there is an alternative that is provided. There are people on the streets that are even homeless and they don't have a, a pot that they can go and get water from. They don't have that much uh, uh, capital or anything that will help them. Some people drink water almost the entire day. And, and eat only once, a very small meal and all that. And then you are depriving these people. So they will resort to drinking from the gutters or something. I don't know how that will work for us. Uh, until that is done, well, for me now, I think it's a, a, a bad policy because there are no alternatives. There are no other ways that people can survive uh, that situation. Yes, uh, uh, food we can carry because you eat food maybe once or twice or something. Uh, but when you have to sleep over, when you have to get stuck in the traffic and all that, everybody brings out plates of food and begins to eat. Everybody brings out water from there. No, I don't know. Anyway, but this is where we have to drop it this morning. Uh, we, we'd like to thank you, Mr. Kolawole, for coming on the program. As usual, it's a pleasure uh, that we're able to have you. Thanks for having me. Mm. Wish you a lovely day and a pleasant week ahead of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We've been talking with Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner and uh, a public affairs analyst. We were looking at the papers and what the headli headlines are uh, this morning. Grab a paper yourself and read on. Uh, next, we'll be talking about uh, uh, tech innovations and today's businesses. And uh, that will be after this short break.